Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am in very reverential attire. <laughs> Reverent. Reverential? Um, this is a very vintage piece as far as Adidas and Jeremy Scott goes. I think it's even like 2010, fall, winter, or spring, summer. Um, it's, as you can see, it's layers of layers of, I have a little bit of pilots going on here. It's a track top. It's just a classic track top. No, but it's laced and it's uh, incredibly done. Um, those were the days. The first collections of Jeremy with Adidas quality was just impeccable. Anyway, so uh, to match this extremely complex and almost, I don't know, we could, we could say um, religious in a way attire, or let's say very um, ornamental attire, or... Um, ritualistic attire, I'm going to talk about Noble Leather. Noble Leather by Yves Saint Laurent. And this is part of their, this is their interpretation of exclusives. Poof. <laughs> it's a bomb. Um, it's their interpretation of exclusivity perfumes, so it's made in limited quantities. Um, it is a it's very oily, oily. It's an eau de parfum. It's not a pure perfume. It's 80 milliliters or 2.7 ounces. Um, it comes in this ambery, this intense, intense gold ambery color. And here you have the sticker that gives you the information. It was made in France, eau de parfum. Eau de Parfum, and um, this one has received quite a bit of bashing online because people think it's overly priced. I mean, it is overly priced, but uh, for what it is, they don't believe that there's a lot of like real natural ingredients in there. This is the packaging, also full on gold, noble leather. A lot of YSLs put together to form the shape of ornament kind of you know very ornamental um let me just check out one thing because i have to figure out noble i have to figure out exactly what is in this perfume to be able to well the funny thing is before i mean without even having to check online these perfumes come as if they were like testers, but they're not testers. All of them come with this description here on the side. You have the accords, leather, saffron, dried fruits, vanilla, and patchouli. So this is, and I already think that they shouldn't have put this on. This makes it a bit cheaper in my personal opinion. But anyway, so what does it say? Dried fruits, leather, patchouli, vanilla, and amber. Okay, whatever. Online says the same thing as um, as the bottle states. But um, I also, I don't know, bottle, I would have made this properly straight, not like that. I, because, you know, they use the same bottles for like a lot of different perfumes, not just these exclusives. Also for the re-editions of uh, Rive Gauche, of Nu, and all that stuff. So, I don't know. It could have invented a better bottle, but I love the gold. Now, as far as the perfume goes, <laughs> it's like a drug. I mean, if a drug had a smell, it would be this. And this beats even opium as far as the drug goes. Because, um... Uh, yeah. It just kicks you, you know? It, like, cuts your feet off in half. And uh, it's very oily. I have, I, you know, as you can see, I've used quite a bit of this perfume. It's something to use only in winter because it's extremely overpowering and um, oily. I, I once, um, you know, without sleeves, had it uh, here and it literally shines like oil. Yeah, here now it doesn't anymore because I uh, have my sleeve on top of it so you don't see it, but it, it shines like oil on your skin. And it, it, that's how oily is it is. And I mean, the sales essays told me, you know, it's um, 
it has essential oils in it. It's like a very oily, very moist perfume. And I do believe given the color, you can kind of imagine how intense this concoction is. And the funny thing is, um, I've noticed also by using this perfume that it smells, it doesn't really change that much from how it smells here to how it smells on my skin and then how it develops on my skin because um, it stays strong and intense throughout. It becomes a bit warmer towards the end, but there's no big evolution. This perfume doesn't really surprise you. Like, it doesn't have edges or corners. It stays relatively omnipotent throughout the entire um, development of it. The leather is there, but only the beginning, actually. That's the weird thing about this. To me, the leather, even though you would imagine it to be one of those heavy scents that are like down there, no, it's on top. And it kind of goes away after a certain point. And the patchouli and the vanilla are very present till the end. And I'm not a big fan of vanilla. But in winter, when it's really, really cold, this is just the perfect scent because that vanilla and that patchouli and especially the dried fruits, it just warm your soul. So it's definitely something to use in winter. And um, it's so crazy. It's the same thing out of the bottle, actually. You could just like test it out of the bottle even out of the stopper. Um, I, I do believe that um, whoever wears this is up for <laughs> scrutiny. Um, people will judge you because it's one of those powerhouse perfumes that just cloys to death, uh, literally. Uh, and you have to have the right mood, you know, have to be in the right state of mind to pull this baby off because otherwise it's gonna swallow you up. Um, you have to be very careful how you dose it, unless you don't want to overdose it, because, you know, as we know, Yves Saint Laurent and the whole heritage of uh, drugs from the 70s and, you know, the first perfume, uh, not the first perfume, but one of his most famous perfumes called, perfumes called Opium, also had a very um, difficult launch and was prohibited in some countries because of the name. Uh, now it has been reformulated, doesn't smell as intense as it used to. I do have a vintage bottle somewhere. Actually, I know where it is. Uh, I might do a review on the original uh, formulation of opium, which is incredible. But, um, so Yves Saint Laurent, you know, those were the days, the 70s, 60s, 70s, you know, these famous people, rich people would travel to the Orient, would travel either to, you know, to Morocco, to um, uh, North Africa, or would go to the Middle East, or would go even further, would go to India, because that was kind of the thing, you know, it was fashion back then. So to look for inspiration over there, I mean, even the Beatles did it, you know, uh, <laughs> music-wise. Yeah, and if you if you think about that heritage of, of Yves Saint Laurent being so oriental, um, Noble Leather just adds up to that big history. And Noble Leather definitely smells extremely oriental, extremely sweet, uh, and, and, and extremely heavy and cloying and... Um, oily at the same time and I yeah I mean this sounds very simple you know saffron the saffron gives it that zest I do feel that saffron even though I don't really recognize it I understand how it's there and how it rounds everything up uh, the saffron is a very intelligent choice to combine with the leather I think because it gives it that orientally touch it's not just smoky but and in fact I, to me it's not very smoky it doesn't have that smoky I mean the incense is missing I guess and the patchouli sweetens it up, the vanilla sweetens it up, the dried fruits are sweet as well, so you could imagine. The only thing that's not sweet is the leather and the saffron, everything else is sweet. So it's a battle of these like dry, dry, leathery scents and the sweet uh, overpowering uh, ones combined together. That's exactly what you get. Uh, and it lasts forever. So... <laughs> Yeah, it just doesn't leave the clothes. It's going to smell forever and it's very, but this is unlike, you know, Coromandel that just does not change on the clothes. This one does. Uh, Coromandel by Chanel. Check out that review too. Uh, this one um, on the clothes smells to me personally really good. So as it develops through time on your garments, I really like, I like to like if I have it on my, you know, anywhere, I would just open it like, Oh, wow, it smells so good. So I would definitely suggest this for those type of purposes. Like just maybe you might like to wear this one, just like a quick spray somewhere on the clothes and not even on the skin. That would also smell delicious and would maybe protect you from 
too much of your own chemistry combined with too much of your own hormones combined with the scent because it might go in a wrong direction. Um, but there's something also very dry about it at the same time that is very... Yeah, reminds me of something. <laughs> um, something um, illegal in a way. You know, it, 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 it drives you a bit insane. I don't know. It's, it's, I love it because it's such a crazy twisted scent. And yes, it does cause headaches for sure. I mean, I've had headaches at least twice or three times with this because I didn't dose it right. So you got to learn how to tame this baby. Um, but if you know how to tame it, you can get so much fun out of it. And it's extremely sensual too and sexual, but your partner has to love it too. Otherwise it's a turn off. So it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one, but it's a fun one. You can have a lot of fun with the Noble leather. Um, I can see the Noble if Noble were a Louis XIV or something like that, because that's the decadence of Noble. It's not a kind of a dried Noble. It's not a Noble that maybe some people would consider, you know, like understatement Noble, the modern Noble. Noble that is just refined in its manners, but understated in its looks. No. This is not that type of noble. This is the type of decadent noble. Gold, 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 gold. More is more, less is less, basically, as Dolly Parton would tell us. <laughs> so, guys, uh, I hope you like this review. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Leave me comments in the comment section below. Right. And uh, subscribe to my channel and we'll see what comes next. Take care, everybody. Love you. Bye.